So I'm starting a new game in Candle Night. It's on Steam, Xbox Series X, and PS5. Um, the newer consoles obviously have better settings, and it loads way better. Alright, so here I am getting my sword. I just uh, went over like my only complaints at the beginning of the game. Not that there are complaints. So my favorite thing about Candle Night is just standing here and doing the Candle Night pose. This is... Uh, Basically the coolest thing, obviously you can swing your sword, um, you get checkpoints, and it's a story based game with bosses, very fun. Um, the fighting mechanics are very nice, and as you hit either enemies or uh, candle wicks, obviously at the top left that bar charges, and uh, you, you could also buy new swords from the merchant. So as the bar gets all the way to red, you run like super fast. So I'll charge up my bar right here on this enemy. Each of the enemies drop gold, which you can spend at the merchants. Alright, so here is my shield. You can press L2 to block with your shield. X to swing your sword. I'm gonna fight a boss soon. He's not really a boss, but he's the odd clockwork knight. You just jump over him, hit him in the back real quick. So uh, anytime you want to heal, you can use Gale Shards to heal, and uh, Solar Vials, those are used to essentially um, charge up the thing at the top left, similar to hitting the, the candlesticks or the other enemies. So here is the Merchant. I recommend buying a health at the first Merchant. But it's cool, you can upgrade your sword later, so let's buy one Gale Shard. So to heal, you press left on the D-pad. This is uh, the merchant in Candle Knight. He's a, another great feature. Um, he sells solar shards, sword upgrades, and uh, gales. Run faster just by hitting uh, candles or the yellow things. So I'm fighting some of the enemies. You do way more damage. Obviously you can block with L2 with your shield. And each of the enemies drop gold, which you can spend at the merchants. You could heal yourself with uh, Gale Shards. You could also heal yourself at checkpoints, such as the Goblets. I have no idea how far I'm gonna get. I assume a bit past the second boss. All right, so you could hit these candles uh, to charge up the thing at the top left and let's go to the next area it's overhead our mechanics are super simple you just have to have patience and uh, try not to get damaged okay nice okay so one thing about this game is, it's easy to get lost, um, and, and start backtracking for no reason. So, I mean, besides like these two points, um, you don't need to pay attention, I assume. So, I'm gonna get my health back from my dead body. I don't know why this guy takes so many hits to take out. Water graphics in this game look sick. Alright, so here is where you get the first ability, which is wall climb. It's super useful. You can obviously you can block with L2, swing your sword with X, and Candle Knight. At the top left, uh, your ignition keeps going up. So let's backtrack after I get wall climb all the way to the left, okay? And uh, besides that, I mean, the other places you could get lost are the book puzzle, which I described in my playthrough uh, at the beginning, and then also after the second boss, when the merchant brings you to the gold, tank, gold coin area. Essentially, you can get uh, stuck there. Is it auto saves a checkpoint? 
So let's head back to the beginning over here and make sure we don't get lost anywhere. Um, it's definitely better to somewhat consult a guide, but not really. You essentially jump up a wall and run back to the left. So this opens up like a shortcut. Which just goes back. Right here, obviously, you don't want to keep going back to the left because that'll just bring you back. I'm going to go get an item over here. I think I go up to the left now. Yeah. So I got my item, which is some gold. Now let's continue to the left. And then continue up. So there's a boss up here. It's not really a boss though. It's like a mini boss. And I'm going to go up into the left and get gold first though. So let's grab the gold over here in the chest. And fight the more candles before the... So, okay. So this boss, you essentially just run and then jump, hit the pallet, and hit the dude. It's way easier on Steam to time. Really? Okay. I stood out in the sun for like an extra 40 minutes for no reason, which is pretty stupid. But like running and n not just being left to right kind of just ruins the experience in my opinion. Alright, so let's save. Alright, so yeah, I don't think this painting actually goes anywhere. So let's just continue forward. anyway. <clears throat> here, one. So here is a. Uh, here is uh, the first boss in Candle Knight. Uh, it's a pretty easy fight, but there are many bosses throughout this game. It looks like, uh, I don't know, what's that game called? I don't even know. I don't care. Alright, so, once you get your ignition up, um, I'm gonna start this fight with, uh, right on the D-pad to use one of my solar vials. Um, so, you could actually make the bubbles float as long as you run under them quick enough. Um, which is a useful mechanic for getting an extra hit in on the boss. So this is the envoy. It's a pretty easy fight. I won the first time. Well, only because I know how to keep her bubbles up in the air. So I could heal up right now with a, a gale sh vial. Which I'll do. Nice. You're imprisoned through distance, weakness, pools, poisons, nice. So I got the dash ability after the first boss. You just press A and